Just you wait and see, boy. Everything's going to turn out all right. God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. If uh, God is magic, Fulton, I wish he would magic something quick. Let's smack out of the sky so we don't have to go away. If you know him good, could you ask him, Fulton? Under the blue sky of Arizona, Peter Alden Hale buckles up his spiritual armor against the storm. Today we bring you another chapter of Against the Storm, written by Sandra Michael and presented by the makers of Ivory Flake. Now I think it's safe to say there's hardly a person who hasn't heard of Ivory Flake, and almost everyone has also heard of famous Bemberg Rayon. But did you know that these two famous products have been friends for years? Sure. You see, the Bemberg people value the famous ivory purity they get in ivory flakes. In fact, the beautiful Bemberg rayon yarns that go into your Bemberg slips and dresses, your lovely Bemberg shears, these yarns are washed and washed many times with ivory flakes while they're being made. And the reason why Bemberg chose ivory flakes for this delicate work is because ivory flakes are pure. Bemberg knows the delicate filaments of this fine rayon yarn are safe in ivory flakes. They will tell you that any harshness in the soap they use on these fine spun yarns would be very harmful. And since they must use as pure a soap as money can buy, Bemberg chose pure ivory flakes. Now, doesn't that tell you that you should use ivory flakes when you wash your lovely dresses and under things made of Bemberg yarn? When famous makers like Bemberg advise a pure soap, when they use pure ivory flakes in making Bemberg rayon yarns, well, you can be sure ivory flakes will be safe for your fine things, too. You see, ivory flakes are the fast-dissolving flake form of pure ivory soap, the soap that's safe even for a baby's skin. And this purity helps protect the beauty of your fine washables. So wash your nice things the ivory flakes way. Help the material stay soft and lustrous. Help colors stay looking fresh and bright a long, long time. Just do as experts advise. Remember, people who make fine Bemberg rayon yarns, like so many other people who make fine things, advise ivory flakes. They're pure. Won't you get a thrifty large-sized box of ivory flakes today? Just try using this pure flake soap for all the fine washable things you own. In Hawthorne, everyone is busy preparing for the annual spring festival, which is... Harper University's favorite celebration. Mark Scott's looking forward to the event with rather special interest because Kathy's friend, Mr. Reed Wilson, is coming down to report the festival for his newspaper. In Mark's opinion, this is a strange assignment for a foreign correspondent. Reed's editor is of the same opinion. But Mr. Wilson is to be here, nevertheless. Out in Arizona, Pascal Tyler, who owns the Circle T Ranch, had quite a talk with his cousin, Kip Tyler, over their breakfast coffee. Kip has guessed maybe a little before Pascal knew it himself, that he's fallen in love with Lucretia Hale. Pascal is thoroughly disgusted with himself, and he's also afraid to say anything to Miss Hale because he has a pretty good idea within his sensible head that his case is hopeless, for a reason he has figured out entirely on his own. On the X-Bar Ranch, Lucretia's son, Peter Alden, and his friend Fullerton are sitting on the far side of their guest house garage, waiting for a call to take letters down to the mailbox. Before them stretches the great still prairie. Oh, if Mommy doesn't hurry up, all those old letters will get left in the box for us. Oh, we got a good piece of time yet. He's writing so many. Oh, a hawk, Fulton, a hawk. Yes, sir. Ooh. And a beauty, too. Now, isn't that a fine sight? Those big, strong wings against the sky? Yeah, but, but hawks are naughty, Fulton. I hate them. There's that word again. But I do, Fullerton. They steal little bunnies and baby chickens, they do. What'd you have for dinner last night? What, Fullerton? I say, what'd you have for dinner last night? Well, you know what we had. Chicken. It was good till I had two wings. Mm, well, then, you and that 
talk up there have a little something in common, don't you? What do you mean, you fullerton? Well, both of you seem to be chicken eaters. Oh. But, but fullerton... What, boy? I don't eat it all alive. <laughs> Doesn't seem to me that helps much either way. Chicken dies sooner or later in either case. Oh. But you don't have to worry about it, boy. All I wanted to point out to you is this. A hawk lives the way he does because it's his nature. That's the way he's made. And you don't have to hate him for being what he is, do you? No. Well, I, I don't know if I could like him. <laughs> well, you could if you ever got to know one personally. Did you ever thought him? No, I, I never did. But I've read some nice things about them here and there. Sometimes I'll tell you some stories about hogs. That's good. Well, to that old mailbox, we're going to be away. Mm, no, we're not. Your mom will be ready in a minute now. She'll be calling us pretty quick. Oh, um. Oh, I should have got some letters done today myself. Me too. I should have write a lot of letters. Should you, boy? Yep. Should have write it to Georgie and lots of different people. Well, it won't be long now before we'll see all our friends back home. What do you mean, Fullerton? Well, you know, pretty soon we're going to take that nice long trip back to the east again. Now that summer's coming on. No! No, you don't think we're going to just sit out here for the rest of our days, Peter Alden. Well, you know that. Well, why can't we? Well, because it isn't where we belong. You don't live out here. Our mother's home is back east. That's just an old partner. Why, Peter Alden, you please not talk that way about your mother's place. It's your home. And it's a very beautiful home, too. Well, it's all right, Fulton. But this is better. I like it here. I want to stay here always and always and always. And, and it's good for my health, Fulton. <laughs> well, of course it's good for your health, boy. But thank goodness there isn't anything the matter with your health now. Not anymore. No, but there might be something the matter with it, Fulton. I think we'd better not go away. Well, you can just be sure your mother wouldn't dream of taking you back east if she didn't think you were just as strong as an old bear. Yeah, but Fullerton... And besides, from what I hear, you'd be going out to the seashore. And I know that's the best kind of a place for your good health. Well, I don't like an old seashore. Oh, that's just talk now. Why, well, remember all the stories you told me about the wonderful times you had last summer at the seashore. Well, I don't care. Mr. Tyler won't be there. Oh, no, but Mr. Tyler is going to... Mr. won't be there. Mm -hmm. But they'll be out here waiting for you to come back next winter. No, no, I don't want to go away. I want to stay here. I want to be a cowboy. Oh, yeah, I think you're going to be a first-rate cowboy before you know it. <laughs> Only I don't believe I ever heard of a cowboy crying. I'm not crying. Oh, well, that's good. Well, of, of course he'll miss you, but he'll know you're coming back. I'm riding old sorrow, I'm leaving old sand, I'm going to Montana, I'm, huh? I'm going to Montana. To... Doggone, I thought I knew that song, too. Let's buy my little pencil, I'm leaving Cheyenne. Doggone it, I... <laughs> Goodbye, little pinto. I'm leaving Cheyenne. That's what I'm going for. Well, thank you, boy. It's a good thing you remembered that. <laughs> Old Tank's a good pony. He pays his money can. Goodbye, my little pinto. I'm off of Cheyenne. Goodbye, Goodbye old paint. I'm leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, Goodbye old paint. I'm leaving Cheyenne. I'm off for Montana. Goodbye, old paint. I'm off for Cheyenne. Oh, God, I'm off for Cheyenne. I like that song. Mr. Tyler learned it to us. Yes, and, and you know that's going to be something. Wait till you get back east and sing all your new songs for the boys back there. I can tell Georgie about Frisco. How I ride on Frisco. My old, my, my new saddle. Why, you bet you can. And we 
going to be a mightily surprised boy to hear all about your cowboy adventures out here. I could tell him lots of things. Well, I just guess you could. Whatever you think, wouldn't it be nice if you brought Georgia something from Arizona? Kind of a little souvenir? What? Or a fancy belt, maybe, like yours. Oh, and a narrow head and a knife like in the store in Tom Fortune? Yeah, I think that would be mighty nice. Well, I really do. Okay. It's going to be fun to see Georgia's face when he sees you in your cowboy outfit. I just bet he'll turn a double somersault. <laughs> Peter Alden, well, I hope you're not going to make your mother feel badly now. Well, it might hurt her feelings to hear you talk like that. Oh, I won't make her feel bad, but I feel bad for him. Yes, I know it, boy. But you just wait and see. Everything's going to turn out fine. When God moves in mysterious ways, he's wonders to perform. What, Fortin? Oh, I, I was just repeating something from the Bible, which says that God has his own ways of working out his plans. God is magic, isn't he, Fullerton? Well, uh, well, you might say that. I uh, wish he would magic something real quick, Fullerton. Like smack out of the sky so we don't have to go away. Say, if you know him good, could you ask him, Fullerton? Peter Alden swims up toward the blue fields of heaven, and Fullerton involuntarily looks up, too. They both become lost in reverie. And Fullerton's feeling that he ought to make a correction on the subject of God and magic subsides and dies away. Words become such queer little noises under the sky, in the wind, in the warm, warm sun. Across the prairie at the Circle T Ranch, Pascal Tyler looks up at the sky and he finds a signal there. What happens isn't magic, but it works wonders just the same. Now, I hope you'll remember what I've told you about washing your fine things with pure ivory flakes. You know, people who make the nice washable things you wear advise this gentle care. This is true of many people who make the lovely print dresses you'll be wearing this spring. As, for instance, the Bemberg Rayon people, who make the yarns used in the beautiful Bemberg washable shears and other washable rayon prints. Why, Bemberg even uses ivory flakes for washing the delicate rayon fibers while the yarns are being made. So you can be sure that Ivory Flakes Care is safe care for your washable Bemberg rayons. In fact, Bemberg will tell you to wash these fine rayons frequently. And we suggest that you do as they do. Use Ivory Flakes. So when you launder your washable prints this spring, why not do as experts advise? Remember, people who make fine washable rayons, like people who make so many other fine washable things, advise Ivory Flakes. They're pure. So won't you get a big blue box of Ivory Flakes today? I should have read a lot of blue letters, too, to Georgie and uh, all the different other people. Perhaps Peter Allen had a friendly old gentleman in mind as one of the different other people on his list. Back east in Hawthorne, Christy Allen Cameron thinks of that same gentleman in Monday's episode of Against the Storm. This is George Putnam speaking for Ralph Edwards and saying goodbye for the makers of Ivory Flakes, 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure. hope you enjoyed listening to what happened in Against the Storm today, friends. And if you did, we're sure you'll enjoy equally well The Guiding Light, which is the next program on this station. Please listen in. This is the National Broadcasting Company.